YouTube. Today in the Naughty Librarian, I am doing my end of February wrap up. I have been a little reading machine this whole second half of February. I have read eight books. What? That's a lot of books. However, a lot of the books were fairly short, so I was just like plowing through these books. It was, it was crazy. <laughs> And you know what? There were some actual surprise hits and surprise misses in this batch. So I'm pretty excited about reviewing these. There's going to be some twists and turns and gasps, so oh my. <laughs> All right, let's go. Let's start reviewing. Let's start things off right here with the Blaze and Bodice Reapers Book Club Book of the Month from Blood and Ash by Jennifer L. Armentrout. There is a live show on my channel with full discussion of it. Uh, so I'm not going to go too much into detail here, but basically I gave it like 3.5 stars. <laughs> uh, there were some things it did well, but overall it is sloppy. It's a sloppy, sloppy fantasy world. Like, nothing's really explained. I found it very predictable. Like, honestly, I was 50% of the way through the book and, like, I called it. Nailed it. It just kind of comes off a bit derivative of Sarah J. Maas. So it is what it is. I mean, if you just want to get into it for, like, campy delightfulness and you don't want to care about, like, the world building making sense, then yeah, you'll probably really dig it. It's got a lot of, like, those tropes that we want in like an angsty fantasy romance. So it like it has the things it was supposed to be doing. It's doing those the way it should. But oh, this world building and the magic system is just a hot mess. And also it has vampires. Who knew? Like I had no idea this had vampires in it. I don't think they call them vampires, but like they're vampires. So yeah, it, it's a mess if you look at it objectively, but if you're just like a person who really, really wants to get into like the tropes this has, you'll have a campily delightful time. There are some things I did like about it. Um, you have your main character, Poppy. She is like 19-ish and you know, she's very kind of sheltered, so she's naive and she's also kind of just starting to learn about sexuality and like what that means for her. And I think actually that was really handled well. Um, it, you know, it, there's a big emphasis on consent and also, you know, just what burgeoning sexuality is. So uh, there was some things in here that I thought worked. So yeah, you know, if you want like um, a, a plucky kicking ass heroine and a sarcastic kind of a dick guy, getting together fantasy world full of vampires like if that's your jam <laughs> i wish you luck you probably might like this i mean a lot of people do like it but um yeah for me i just felt like it was it was pretty sloppy like i love jennifer armentrout i've read all of her books but like i think jennifer armentrout is distinctly suited to more urban fantasy than regular fantasy so i don't know it was fine it was fine Next category is sports romance, and I read three of them. I finally read Intercepted by Alexa Martin. Overall, I think I gave it like four stars. It was fine. You know, it's delightful, and it's like a rom-com. Definitely in the sports world. We're following Marley. Um, she is kind of... Like, I think you're either gonna like Marley a lot or you're going to be annoyed because the way this is written, like her inner thoughts, she uses a lot of hashtags, like as thoughts in her head. I'm like, you're not on Twitter. So it was weird, but like, you're either gonna like it or not like it, you know, it's one of those things. And you know, she's been dating this guy for like since high school pretty much. And he's a football player. And um, well, like he's just been banging everybody on the side and she finally catches him. And she's like, I'm leaving, Bye bye And comes Gavin. He is the new quarterback at this team. He just got traded to the team her boyfriend's on. Mind you, she and Gavin had a fling years ago, like with a one night stand type of thing. And she's like, oh my gosh, it's Gavin. And then like, they kind of just immediately start a relationship right after she got out of a very long-term relationship. So already I'm just like, oh, this is a, probably a bad choice. And they do kind of go into that a bit about not being ready for a relationship even though it is a good relationship, but you're not ready for it. So he does talk about that a bit. Also, Gavin is like the most like swoony boyfriend. I feel like she just like laid a lot of swoon into Gavin. So I was like into that. But like, I couldn't give it like a five star, even though I was, it was delightful to read because there was a bunch of little plot points that they brought up and did nothing with after it was just in there for reasons and it didn't really add anything to the story. I'm like, why did you put that in there? Like there's this whole subplot with like this homeless man she helps who's actually 
like a crack addict and then like he like tries to like sell her to a bad guy. There's like a whole thing with like drug dealers and getting beaten up and like it was like why is this in the book? It has nothing to do with the book. So there's weird subplots that just go nowhere. So I couldn't like give it five stars because it's like that what? <laughs> but overall, you know, if you want like a sports rom-com dash of angst, dash of laughs, it's kind of fun. It's a nice like book you just you could probably read it all in a day. It's not very long, but it's just like a nice like relaxed book. Okay, so <laughs> I read Not My Romeo by Ilsa Madden Mills. Now, the thing is, I talked mad shit about this book when I first got it because I read the blurb. And in my defense, this blurb is terrible. It makes the book look so bad. Like, who wrote this? This is hot garbage. And then I was like, okay, I'm going to read it because one of my lovely subscribers left a comment saying, ha ha ha, watch it be one of your favorite books. And I was like, oh, what if, what if they're right? So um, I read it and um, I gave it four unironic stars. I kind of really liked it. <laughs> However, all of the things I said about it being stupid are still valid. Like this book is stupid. Like it makes no sense whatsoever. However, it's strangely delightful to read. This is like a book, you have a Saturday to yourself, you get on the couch, you drink all the wine and eat all of the candy you want and you just read and like you just have a me time and this is the perfect book for it because it makes no sense but it's so delightful that you're like screw it this is just what's happening <laughs> so we're following Elena and Jack and this starts off on Valentine's Day of course because the rom-com and it's a blind date that Elena's supposed to be on she gets to the restaurant she sees this guy in a blue shirt she's like oh well that's my date sits down at the table with this guy and it's Jack Hawk the professional football player slash, you know, hotshot quarterback of the team of the city that she lives in. She has no idea who he is. So <laughs> he, she just sits down at this table and starts this date with him. And he's just like, okay. And like, he kind of just goes with it. And then one thing leads to another thing. They're back at his house and they just like bang the bejesus out of each other. And then that's where the story gets even more weird. <laughs> okay, so Elena, she is... A naughty librarian so to speak like she's a librarian full-on librarian and on the side she designs lingerie it's like who what how are you a person <laughs> and they all live in this small southern town and then jack hawk you know he's hotshot quarterback with a dark past which i kind of get into in the book but they, they, they never go anywhere with it because you know who cares and it's like one of those things where it's kind of dumb but who cares so anyways they have this big bang the bejesus up out of each other night and then he's like hey can you sign this nda and she's like okay whatever and she writes a fake name on it and leaves she's like <laughs> hit myself with my own little like doodad but anyway she leaves and she's like whatever i'll never see him again and then he's just like oh we gotta find this girl because she signed this with a fake name and so eventually other things come into play and now he's in her small town what it makes no sense and also she does community theater and then somehow Jack gets roped into being in the community theater play. So now they're in a community theater play together. He's a professional football player. What is happening? <laughs> and you know, it says it's just follows rom-com tropes. They do great and then they have the breakup and they get back together, the whole thing. Very, you know, well-trodden territory here for rom-coms, but like strangely delightful does it make a lick of sense no but was it fun to read like kind of yeah like i kind of enjoyed it you guys i enjoyed it so much i bought the next book and i read it too what is life right now i don't even know <laughs> so i i finished not my romeo and i went and i bought not my match by ilsa madden mills as well this is like a sequel to now we're following giselle who is elena's sister and her romantic interest is Devin, who is one of Jack's friends, also plays in the same team with him. So it, they're just they're just sticking to the same concept, but with different pairings now. It's just like still the football player and another one of the sisters. It's just the same. <laughs> so Giselle is kind of like the nerd girl extraordinaire. She is um, trying to get a doctorate in physics because of course she is, and she lives in a small town, and she's a virgin. <laughs> like these characters are ridiculous. And then you have Devin, who is like the bad boy wide receiver, and he's got tattoos and purple hair. And then they, they like each other. And then like things happen, like her apartment burns down. And he's just like, hey, do you want to live with me? And then they're living together. And they're both like trying so hard not to do it. 
for like a lot of the book. <laughs> so if you're reading it, you're just like, oh my gosh, just just start mating. Like you just want them to do it already because there's so much tension for the whole book. And then they finally just do it and you're just like, oh my gosh, like for real. Like if they're gonna do it, they do it right. Like she loses her virginity on the hood of a Maserati. Like what? <laughs> Like I said, it makes no sense at all. It makes zero sense, but like strangely delightful to read. I enjoyed it greatly, actually. Again, the four star book. If they write more books of the series because they have introduced other characters that I'm sure will get their own books, like I'd probably read them. What is life? I don't even know. I talked a lot of shit about the book and I actually liked it. So <laughs> next category is historical romance and I read one of them. I read The Heiress by Lindsay Sands. This is uh, a part of a different series I hadn't started yet, and it's book two of the series. So it starts off with like a lot of things happening, and I was like, wait a minute, I feel like I have missed something, because I didn't know this was book two of a series. I thought this was a standalone. <laughs> and for a lot of the book, I did really have a good time reading it. I thought it was like excellent banter, clever, funny. They have this whole Weekend at Bernie subplot where they're trying to hide a corpse. Like, there's a lot going on here. <laughs> So we're like following Suzette. She is our plucky heroine. She's very feisty and her dad has apparently gambled them into a place where she needs to go marry for money. She needs to do it now. And the thing is her one caveat in finding a husband is that she wants him to be just dirt poor because she has a huge dowry and she's just like, hey, I just want to find some guy who'll be so happy to get some of my money, he'll leave me alone. <laughs> and like, leave me with enough money to pay for my stuff and my dad's bills and just leave me alone. Like, that's her caveat. So she's going to this party and she's like dancing with dudes. She's like, is he poor enough? No? Okay, never mind. So that's like her thing. <laughs> and then in comes Daniel and he's like some type of nobility. I forget what he is right now. He's like a duke or not a duke, but like a, 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 an earl. I don't, I don't remember. He's some type of thing. And she just asks him because she thinks he's kind of hot. She's like, hey, do you have money? And he's like, no, not a penny. And she's like, you're perfect. Let's get married. And he's like, what is happening? <laughs> so it's definitely a really great banter because Suzette is just like crazy and says like all of this stuff. And then Daniel is just like, what, who, what are you reading? Who taught you this? Like, he's just so confused. And I love their dynamic with each other. It's great. And then you get to like three quarters of the way through the book. And then honestly, like it became infuriating how stupid everyone got all of a sudden like they started off pretty smart everything was together and then three quarters of the way through the book everyone lost their damn minds and I was listening on audio and I was in the car just like screaming on the freeway just going you fucking stupid bitches like I was just infuriated by how dumb they were <laughs> So besides that, I did actually enjoy a lot of the aspects of the book. I thought it was actually pretty well written. It, it you know, has a murder mystery, of course, because all Lindsay Sands have murder mysteries. And it, it was kind of delightful. I had great banter, great subplots, except they all of a sudden, everyone just became imbeciles at 75% of the way through the book. But it had a happy ending, so whatever. I did kind of enjoy it. It makes me really want to go see book one, maybe, because I feel like I was missing a bit because they are hiding a body. Like, how did the body happen? <laughs> but uh, yeah, I liked it. I thought it was pretty okay. Four stars. Next category is sci-fi, and I read two of them. Oh my goodness gracious, you guys. I read The Echo Wife by Sarah Gailey, and holy potatoes, did I love this. Five stars. It's incredible. I read it all in one day. It, it's pretty short. I think it's under 300 pages. Yeah, it's 256 pages. Like you could knock this out a day easy. The best way to describe this book for me is to say it's like a modern sci-fi feminist Frankenstein story, which like if I just said that to you, like you should already be like, give me the book. That sounds great. <laughs> so we're following Evelyn. She has been working in cloning technology for like her whole scientific career. And she is recently divorced because it turns out her husband was having an affair with a clone of her. So that's a whole bucket of worms. And wouldn't you know, Martine, the clone, and Evelyn need to team up because, uh oh, the cheating husband's dead. <laughs> and it's not a zany, like, friendship buddy comedy thing. It's actually really feminist and gets into, like, just a lot of the ways modern women have to interact with the world. And also Frankenstein, because she has literally created a being. She's like, it's alive, you know? She literally creates beings. And uh, it's really interesting to see, like, these two sides of the same person because they are the same person, but 
have been modeled completely differently by their experiences. So, oh my gosh, there's like a lot of layers here, but yeah, modern sci-fi feminist Frankenstein. Like if that is like floating your boat, please pick this up. It's amazing. I gave it five stars. It's probably going to be on my best of the year list. I enjoyed this intensely. I also read Network Effect by Martha Wells. This is the most recent installment in the Murderbot series. Oh man, do I love Murderbot. It's so good. <laughs> And honestly, for anyone who's a little antisocial, like Murderbot will make your dreams come true. Uh, Murderbot lives in this world where they are just, uh, they're other because they are not a human, but they live among humans. So it's like a whole thing of them just going, oh, humans, what are you gonna do with them? Am I right? <laughs> so um, Murderbot's a security droid and they have to, you know, provide security for humans. And there are certain ones that, Murderbot likes more than others. And it's kind of like growing and learning and becoming your own person, so to speak. Not really a person, but own entity. Because Murderbot needs to uh, break out on their own. And they have had adventures without their humans. And they've made friends along the way. So it's also a journey of becoming a new person and in finding your own identity. And also, you know, sci-fi zany swearing robots. And it's like, what? I love it. <laughs> this one in particular though, they bring back art. Art we met in, uh, I think book two. And art is an acronym. It means asshole research transport. It's a spaceship that Murderbot made friends with, sort of. Like, you know, it's one of those antagonistic friendships. And, uh, they, and then things happen and art needs help and Murderbot's trying to help. And it's showing you know, like a, a friendship between two robots who are sentient, but like a completely different type of sentience. So it's interesting seeing their like relationship. And honestly, the whole time I was reading this book, I was like hearing that song, The Boys Are Back In Town, because I just want to see them go on adventures. The space adventures forever, murder bot and art, yes. <laughs> so yeah, it, it's very funny, it's very sarcastic, it has great sci-fi stuff, it's just, it's great. It has like a heart for sci-fi, even though it's about characters who would, you know, defend to the teeth that they do not have at heart, but whatever. It's Murderbot and it's great. The last category is fiction? I, I'm not really sure where to put this, so fiction. I read one of them. I read The Rules of Magic by Alice Hoffman, and I'll be honest guys, like, it's somewhat of a DNF. Like I read like 70% and like skimmed the rest because um, it's not that I didn't enjoy it or think it was good. I was just bored of it. It was just me. I was just not feeling it anymore. Uh, this is a prequel, but a sequel. Basically practical magic. I mean, it's also a movie from the 90s. It came out. This is a prequel to it, but it came out after the first book. And this is in the 60s. So we're following these uh, sisters who I believe are the ants in practical magic. And it's Franny and Jet. And they are young women. They're in their teens into their 20s in this. So there's like the 60s to the 70s, that era, New York. So it's already like a great setting. And also there's witchcraft. And the big thing about this witch family is that they're cursed. Um, I've read the, pre the sequel and prequel to this one already. So I already know about the curse. It's basically anyone who falls in love with an Owens woman is doomed doomed essentially to die or just doomed and um so you know they have some problems with relationships so it's also seeing these women you know come into their own womanhood and like want things that a lot of young women want you know relationships love and um not being able to get it or scared of getting it because if they do it's doomed you know so it's an interesting concept to play with and it's kind of, I believe, just really filling in a lot of plot holes that are probably from Practical Magic and setting things up for that book, which I have not read. <laughs> it's, it's definitely, it's, it feels almost Forrest Gumpy because there's so many like events of the 60s and 70s that they're getting into. <laughs> like there's the Vietnam War in there and like all kinds of stuff. So like it was very much hitting those hot spots of those decades. And also witchcraft and a lot of like sadness because they keep trying to have relationships and they just are doomed and they're really messy and sad and like awkward and I don't know it, it, it was just like too much sadness after a point where I'm just like oh my word like I just need to move on get a 70% through and I skimmed so I I feel like I have read it I read 70% that's like almost the whole thing so yeah I'm counting it um I gave it I didn't rate it actually because I did not technically read it all so I couldn't feel right about rating it if I had read every single word for the last 30% I would give it 
I don't know, 3.5 stars. There you go. It, it was fine. It wasn't my favorite. I think I liked the first book. Well, the first book and the third book at, at the same time. I like that one better, which is Magic Lessons. I liked it better. It was the Salem Witch Trials era. This one's the 60s. So, um, yeah, it was fine. I don't really know what genre this is. Is this women's fiction, literary fiction, just fiction, fantasy? I don't know. It, it, it's, it's fiction. I know that. <laughs> I don't know where to put this in a classification system. Okay, so that is eight books I read in the second half of February. I don't know what it is about February, guys. Like every February, I read so many books and it's the shortest month of the year and yet I read the most. Let me know in the comments down below. Um, have you read any of these books and what did you think about them? Or hey, is there a book you found that you talked mad shit about and then you read it and you're just like, oh no, I like it. <laughs> what was your surprise hit? Let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, make sure you give it a like. And if you want to see more videos, make sure you subscribe. And I'll see you guys soon. Bye!